So hello and happy Friday, May the 12th. I'm Frederick Dunn and I'm sorry to say there won't be a Q&A today. It's sunny and 78 degrees outside. I just hived a swarm in this APMA 7 frame nucleus hive when I heard that familiar roar of another swarm leaving a hive. I have to say that I'm impressed. You're about to see more than seven minutes of bees departing from a beehive. How is that even possible? How many bees could there be in a single hive? I have to be somewhere to give a presentation to a bee group. So I'm out of time and can't do the Q&A. So I hope you'll be satisfied watching this instead. One hive. Look at these bees. You now I thought I would walk over here and watch these honeybees departing. What are they doing? They're swarming, of course. I was hoping to get the queen. I was watching. Keeping my camera on them. My left hand was ready to grab her if she came out. I was not prepared to watch this kind of intensity for more than seven consecutive minutes. It's pretty unbelievable. Some people look at a video like this and think, Man, you sped that up. No, I didn't. This is real time. This is not sped up. Everything you're hearing and seeing is exactly the way it happened. We see lots of drones coming out of here. We've got workers, young and old. We've got foragers that have pollen with them. They've all filled up on honey, of course, on their way out the door because they need their resources to start a new colony. But it is unbelievable that they just kept pouring out. And you have to wonder, where do these huge swarms come from and what's left behind? We know that they have the potential to depart with up to 70% of the hive's population. Now the queen's got to come out. If I see her, I'm going to grab her. Of course, this is a narration after the fact. I can save you the stress there. I did not see the queen. But uh, just look at what's going on. This is like going to the circus and seeing a tiny car with a bunch of clowns that just keep coming out of it. There's no way there's this much room in this hive for all of these bees. What could possibly be left behind? But sure enough, they keep coming. Just sit and watch. Let me know if you spot the queen at any point. I want to get you close because I want you to experience it. The sounds and the sights. We'll talk more in a minute. Remember, this is not sped up. This is exactly how fast they move when they are swarming out of a hive.
Now let's go see where they're headed. Look at that tree. The spiky spruce tree. Of course they're moving in up there. Huge swarm like that. They're not going to land high level somewhere. Why would they? Let's get you closer. They're all collecting there, and while they're doing that, I have other things to do. I'll have to come back later and see how many of them end up assembling on this branch, and I'm standing at the top of a 12-foot ladder to get this video just for you so that you get the full experience of bees departing, bees arriving, then what's going to happen. Look at this well-behaved installed swarm in the 7-frame newt. Well, I want to thank you for joining me for this short presentation, and I want to thank you for understanding that sometimes bees have to come first, so no Q&A today. And oh, by the way, if you didn't know, Sunday is Mother's Day. Things are happening around here, and many more topic-specific topic videos are coming up next week, and uh, I hope you'll tune in for those, because we have some other swarm interesting behaviors to share. And of course, we'll update you on all of these hives. If you're in my neck of the woods, get out to your apiary. Things are happening. Bees are swarming. I'm Frederick Dunn, and this has been The Way to Be. Thanks for being here today. Enjoy your weekend. So you really didn't think I was going to leave you hanging, did you? Let's go back and look at the tree and see how many bees collected on it. Look at that. Not one bee. Wow, the swarm left. Where'd they go? Good news. They're right here. Easy to get, by the way. Really close to the ground. Look at them all. Just clustered together. Social influencers trying to tell them where to go fanning themselves. This is a lot of bees. Several pounds of bees. Go by weight when you see this many. 
Look at all the young bees that are in here too. You can tell them by their soft, fuzzy, silver colored bodies with lots of hair. Oh, look at that. There's the giveaway. That is the high visor, which means they did what? That's right. They went right back to the hive they departed from. And they clustered on the front of it, which is key. They didn't go back inside. Look at that fly right there. That's brave. Anyway, they're on the outside of the hive. They're tactically still in bivouac mode, though, because they didn't go back in. The queen's in there somewhere. What can we do with these bees now? Well, now we have to adopt a wait-and-see approach. We could get out the Colorado bee vac and vacuum them all off of there, but then if the queen sought shelter inside the hive, we wouldn't have her, see? So that's not a good solution. So now we have a waiting game, and here's the problem. They're already in bivouac mode, which means when they flew out and landed on that tree, however brief, and then they came back and now they've landed on the hive again without going in. This counts as a bivouac, which means all these waggle dancers that are out here and look at them giving their little informational dances, trying to convince this colony, this swarm, where they want them to go, they may depart from this hive and go straight to the cavity that they want to occupy. So we're going to have to let them do that. That's pretty much the way it's going to be. Let's pull back and give you a look at the real scale of this. So this is a 10 frame Langstroth hive. Deep box that they're on with a medium box above it, insulated inner cover and so on. Uh, because I'm behind right now, we should have supered this colony, but it wouldn't have made a difference because they already have replacement queens inside in their queen cells ready to emerge any day. So of course I'm going to close out with some slow motion sequences for you so you can see what's going on. And if you look right about dead center at the lower third mark you see an opening. That's because when they cluster on the front like this, sometimes this is referred to as bearding, but in this case it's a bit wet. They uh, leave a ventilation hole there so that the bees that still decide to live here can go in and come out. And also so they ventilate the hive because that's important. Inside there's still brood. There are new queens about to emerge from their queen cells. And there's uh, a regular colony of bees carrying on business as usual inside there. So I'm just going to let you watch this to the end. And I just wanted to let you know what happened to them. They're probably going to take off again, who knows when. They could hang out just like this overnight and leave tomorrow sometime. But as I mentioned before, I think they're going to head to their final destination next. I don't think they're going to go back to the tree. And why did they return to the hive? That's anybody's guess. Sometimes you would refer to this as a fire drill. But with a fire drill, they actually go back inside the hive. They don't park themselves on the outside. So this still counts as a bivouac if we're just talking about the specifics of the terms. So I hope you enjoyed it. Enjoy watching the slow motion sequences and listening to them. And uh, once again, for the final time, I'll wish you a happy weekend.